In this video, I'll work through an example where we use vectors to find the angles of a triangle. So here's the problem we're going to be working on. We're given three points in three-dimensional space, P, Q, and R, and we're actually asked for all of the angles of the triangle. I'm just going to work through finding angle P here, but the other two angles are pretty similar. So the idea here is helped if we draw a picture. So it's hard to plot these points accurately in three-dimensional space, but to get the idea for what to do, it doesn't really matter where these points are. We've just got three points P, Q, and R, and we're interested in the angle at point P. This is the angle that we want. That's our theta. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the dot product. And the dot product of the vector from P to Q, which we call PQ with a little arrow on top, and if we take that and the dot product of the vector from P to R, which we'll call PR with a little vector on top, so PQ dot PR is the magnitude of PQ times the magnitude of PR times the cosine of that angle theta that we're looking for. So if we can find those two vectors, PQ and PR, then we can take their dot product, and then we'll know all of the numbers in this equation except for the cosine of theta. We'll solve for the cosine of theta, use inverse cosine to get theta itself, and that's our strategy. That's how we're going to do this. So first things first, how do we find PQ? So the vector from P to Q is the coordinates of Q minus the coordinates of P. So that's going to be 4 minus 0, comma, 4 minus negative 1, comma, 1 minus 5. So that means our vector is 4, 5, negative 4. And the vector from P to R is the coordinates of R minus the coordinates of P. So that's going to be negative 4 minus 0, 4 minus negative 1, and 3 minus 5. That gives us the vector negative 4, comma, 5, comma, negative 2. So now we're going to take the dot product of those two vectors, pq dot pr. And remember, for the dot product, we're just going to multiply the corresponding components. So that's going to be 4 times negative 4 plus 5 times 5 plus negative 4 times negative 2. And that's going to be negative 16 plus 25 plus 8 which is 17. So that's our dot product. So this number right here is 17. What about the magnitude of these two vectors? So the magnitude of PQ is going to be the square root of the squares of the components of PQ. So that's the square root of 4 squared plus 5 squared plus negative 4 squared, which is the square root of 57. Similarly, the magnitude of PR works out to be the square root of 45. So that means that the cosine of theta, if we solve this equation for the cosine of theta, is going to be 17 divided by the square root of 57 times the square root of 45. And when we throw that on our calculators, that works out to be about 0.33566. But that gives us the cosine of theta. Now when we take the inverse cosine of both sides, we get the theta equals about 1.228, and so on. We get lots of decimal places. Now remember, that's in radians. And if we look at our problem, the problem is asking us to convert this to degrees. So the final step here is to take this number that's in radians and multiply by 180 divided by pi. And that's going to give us 70.39 degrees. They ask us to round to the nearest tenth, so that's going to be 70.4 degrees, and that's our final answer. So the strategy here is we're going to find our two vectors by subtracting the coordinates of the points. Then we take the dot product of the two vectors, we find the magnitude of the two vectors, we solve for the cosine of theta, we take the inverse cosine, and then convert to degrees.